I don't see it as a problem, so you can eat more fruits. But however, if you are concerning about weight gain because of the sugar in fruits, or you are concerning about your blood sugar level, then you limit your fruits intake to not more than two servings per day. What is one serving of fruits? Yeah? Any fruit that comes in this size, like apple, orange, pear, one, ser- one fifth size is considered one serving. Larger fruits like guava or mango, half fruit is one serving. Small fruits like grapes, berries, one handful is one serving. And any fruits that can be cut into wages like papaya, watermelon, one thin wage is considered one serving. So try to aim for three servings of vegetables and two servings of fruits per day. So this is a different pictures or different combinations of fruits and vegetables in a day that you can take. Let us just focus in the middle one, for example. Yeah? So three servings will be from vegetables, like you have your salad, you have your cherry tomato and some celery steaks, and two servings will be coming from fruits like uh, honeydew or cantaloupe and also with your blueberries. So one day, include these five servings, spread it out throughout your day. Okay. Besides taking five servings of fruits and vegetables, try to aim for five colors as well. Okay? Because different colors will give you different phytochemicals to fight against different diseases. Okay? So when you, you can try something like fruit kebab, or rainbow pizza, or as simple as a smoothie bowl topped with different fruits, and as simple as salad, or even like our Asian dishes, you simply add more vegetables in your cooking, or you opt for vegetables when you eat in the hawker center. Okay. Next, you can also practice healthy plate concept in which you separate your plates into three parts. Half of your plate should be filled by vegetables, another quarter filled with whole grains, preferably whole grains, and another quarter will be filled by protein, lean protein, skinless poultry, for example, cooked in low-fat cooking methods. Then you can take a fruit as your dessert. So you take a fruit outside your plate. So one day, or most of the time, you should be eating something like this. I would say 80 to 90% of the time, you should be eating like this. The other 10%, yes, you can give, give yourself some cheat day or cheat meals. Okay? But most of the days, you should be eating like this. I would say that one day, two meals should look something like this. Yeah? Okay, so again, this is a distribution of the meal throughout a day. So you practice plate concept. Okay, for your lunch and dinner, you are, you are already getting four servings of vegetables. So you take fruits as maybe breakfast and also dinner. After dinner, you take a fruit as a dessert, you are taking two servings ready. So with this meal plan, you can easily achieve four servings of vegetables and two servings of fruits. Okay, next challenge that I want to share with you is that we need to maximize our nutrient intake within our calorie allowance or requirement. So on the axis underneath, you see that the changes, in, the changes of age in years. So on this graph here, I will show you two line graphs. One is orange in color, represent the calorie requirement per kg body weight. And the blue, blue line graph represent the nutrient requirement per kg body weight. Okay, so let's start with the calorie requirement per kg body weight first. Okay, so as we first born, uh, we have uh, during infancy, our body will need more calories for growth and development. But during childhood, it will slowly reduce a little bit, but it quickly picks up again and reach its summit du- uh, during adolescence. But after the age of 25, where aging starts, so after the age of 25, our energy requirement will reduce in time. So it will reduce slowly. So let's look at the pattern of nutrient requirement per kg body weight. Does it look the same? Does it have the same pattern with the energy requirement? Okay, so at the beginning stage, especially before adolescence or before 20s, the pattern is more or less similar. That means when we are younger, besides we need more energy, we also need more nutrients for growth and development. But you can see that there's a disparity. After the age of 25, instead of going down together with the energy requirement, our nutrient requirement increase in time. And why is it so? Okay, let's take a look. Why do we need more nutrients while we are needing lesser calorie requirement as we grow older? This is because first, there are some changes in our gut function. So let's start with the mouth part. So uh, when we grow older, probably we have poorer dentition and we have uh, poor fitting denture. And this has affected us uh, or even affected our preferences in our food that we take because we can't really eat the things that we used to be able to eat. Another thing about the changes in gut function is your stomach acid 
as you grow older, the stomach acidity will reduce. When the stomach acidity reduces, there will be uh, impairment in a lot of nutrient absorption and also nutrient digestion. Next, we, we have reduced or smaller appetite. This is a normal scenario in aging. It's because that when we grow older, our body can't, um, uh, can't produce adequate hunger-inducing hormone. We call it ghrelin. So as you grow older, ghrelin level will reduce. So because of this, sometimes elderly don't feel hungry and they forget about, they, they miss their, their meal and so on. It's because of the ghrelin has reduced. And also we have smaller appetite. Next, we have, small, we have lesser metabolic rate. Why is it so? Because as we grow older, we lose our body mass and at the same time, we gain more fats. So com comparing with our muscles, fats, they are considered metabolically less active. So muscles are metabolically more active. So when we lose muscles and gaining more uh, fats, so this reduces our metabolism. And also, we are physically less, less active comparing to the younger days. Lastly, we start to have some medical conditions that require us to take medication, and the medication will impair nutrient absorption and also nutrient metabolism in the, in the body. So owing to all these reasons, we ought to take a more stringent diet as we grow older. That means we have lesser room for uh, junk food, processed food, and so on. We really need to appreciate or treasure the calorie requirements so that we can get hold of the nutrients that our body needs. Okay, next, to make things even more complicated, nowadays, there are a lot of factors that affect the nutrients level in the food that we take. I will just focus on two here. First is that pollution. Okay, soil overuse and depletion. This is because the soil can't really keep up with the exponential growth of human population. So because of this, the soil has been overused and because of this, it has caused depletion in the nutrients in the soil and also with global warming and so on. So there's a research I found uh, in this journal, Journal of Sustainable Agriculture, has shown that there are a lot of countries have shown um, nutrient deficiency even in the soil itself. For example, like Bangladesh, Indonesia, or even Japan, Korea, and Malaysia has reduced in the nutrient content in the soil. So when the soil is not nutritious, of course, the crops will be affected as well. So this is another study from, uh, from American College of Nutrition where they study on the changes in the USDA food composition data for the past 50 years. And they found out a lot of the crops that we eat today has reduced in the nutrient level comparing to 50 years ago. So it's quite sad to know. Next will be okay, cooking methods. We also affect the nutrient level in our food. So for example, if you are getting very nutritious foods ingredients, but if you are cooking them in the wrong way, you're probably not getting the optimal nutrition that the food is able to offer. So if you take overly cooked or um, spoiled fruits and vegetables, of course the nutrient level will be much lesser than, than you're taking it at, at its peak season. So try to take fresh fruits and vegetables. When you eat vegetables, just cook them lightly. Don't have to overcook them so you can retain more nutrients. And this picture here, I will show you two ways of cooking broccoli. So on, my, on your left-hand side, you see boiling of broccoli and on the other hand, you see steaming of broccoli. Which one you think will retain more nutrients? Which cooking method? Steaming. Okay, let's take a look at the factors that affect nutrient level. First, cooking, temp cooking duration. The longer the cooking duration, of course, there will be more nutrient loss. Surface area, if you cut your vegetables into small pieces or you simply are uh, immersing uh, immersing um, your vegetables into a large medium of cooking, then when it's a small surface exposed to the cooking medium, this will affect the nutrients level, as in more nutrients will be leached out from the vegetables. Okay? So lastly, it will be cooking temperature. Of course, when a higher cooking temperature, more nutrient loss will be, will be uh, happening. So owing to this reason, for these two cooking methods, I'm comparing the surface area. So your answer is correct. Steaming, you retain more nutrients because there's lesser surface area exposed to the cooking medium. So in this case, it's the hot steam. Okay, so besides steaming, you can actually uh, use, utilize cooking methods like sooting, stir frying, uh, blanching very quickly, or slow cooking, which can retain more nutrients. Okay, so uh, plenty of times when I discuss about cancer, uh, diet, diet prevention for cancer, 
I will get questions like whether, whether do I need to take organic food or not? Okay, so now I address this uh, topic. So let's, let's take a look at what is organic food. Organic